1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, praise the Lord. Just bear with me a minute. So you're getting an example of why we need a little more room. Uh, the fifth chapter of 1 Corinthians, and uh, I'm going to start at the 17th verse and do a little reading. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, verse 20, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled unto God. And the, third, the 21st verse is where I want you to focus your attention, and that's where uh, uh, our main thought will emerge from. The 21st verse that says, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. He took our place. He changed places with us. Amen. He became sin. We, the whole world was lost and bound in sin. Amen. And God found one who was worthy that one sacrifice, one who was so worthy that one sacrifice of his blood would atone for the sins of all mankind. Amen. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And a perfect example, amen, of uh, the vicarious sufferings of Jesus Christ are found over in, uh, in the book of Isaiah. You all are familiar with this, I'm sure. If you studied any Bible at all, amen, you know that the 53rd chapter of Isaiah gives us a portrait of the vicarious sufferings of the Messiah. Why there had to be a Messiah. Why the Messiah had to be the Son of God. Because the Messiah would come and would offer his blood as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of all men. Amen? And you, if, you, if you love Jesus, if you know Jesus, if you've been born again, just reading the 53rd uh, chapter of Isaiah will make you love him even more, make you appreciate the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ even more. I'm going to read the whole chapter. Amen. 53rd chapter of Isaiah, starting at the first verse. It says, who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? That's a, a very appropriate way to start because there's, you know, so many people that uh, have difficulty accepting, you know, the, the promise of God, the gift of God, God's plan of salvation is so amazing, so wonderful, amen, that people have difficulty, they, they say it just, it, it just can't be true. Eternal life, immortality, all my sins forgiven, amen. Uh, uh, you know, people, you know, they, they have trouble processing that. It's so wonderful. It's the greatest offer that's ever been made, the, give, the greatest gift that's ever been given. Amen? And 
uh, you know, we want to thank God for our Lord Jesus Christ who paid the price. He became the sacrifice lamb. Amen. Uh, all the way back in the book of Genesis, amen, Abraham, uh, he, uh, he actually gave a prophecy. Abraham gave a prophecy back in uh, the 22nd chapter of, of Genesis. You don't have to turn to that. Amen. Uh, 22nd chapter of, of, of Genesis. You can mark it down. 22nd chapter of Genesis in the 8th verse. Amen. You all have heard it, us uh, quote the metaphorical prophecy of Abraham when Abraham told his son, the Lord shall provide himself a sacrifice. Amen. Now, when you think about those words, that's exactly what God did. Amen. God was in Christ. Amen. Praise God. Reconciling the world unto himself. Amen. Praise God. The vicarious sufferings of Jesus Christ. Uh, this prophecy in Genesis, the 22nd chapter and the 8th verse, it was a metaphorical pro pro prophecy. Amen. Uh, uh, and the prophet John the Baptist, when he first came onto the scene, he made reference to that prophecy that happened so many years earlier by Isaiah. Amen. John the Baptist, when he, when he first recognized who the Messiah was, and he saw Jesus coming as John the Baptist was with his disciples. And he saw Jesus, and it was his first opportunity to make known to his disciples, to the disciples of John, it was his first opportunity to make known to them who Jesus was. And he told them, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And that supports the same thought that came out of the prophecy of Abraham. Amen. God, amen, will provide himself a ram or a lamb for the sacrifice. Amen. Amen. So Jesus suffered vicariously for the sins of the world. That means any, any person, whosoever will, anybody that believes it. That's why the prophecy starts off in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah that says, who hath believed our report? It's for whosoever will believe it. Anybody that believes it, the gift of God is extended to them, is available to them. Amen? Thank God that the Holy Spirit knocked on our door, knocked on the door of our heart, and made us to realize that God was calling us. Those who have accepted Christ, you responded to the, to the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had to touch you, had to open your eyes. Amen? When Jesus asked the disciples, whom do men say that I am? And they said, some say that you're one of this prophet, and some say you're that prophet. And Jesus said, whom do you say I am? And Peter stepped forward boldly, as he normally did, and said, thou art the Christ. Thou art the Messiah. Thou art the Son of the living God. Amen. And Jesus said, Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. When you come to the realization of who Jesus is and why he came, and what he accomplished, and when you reach out and, and receive it for yourself, it's the Holy Spirit that quickens you. It's the Holy Spirit that gives you that enlightenment. The Holy Spirit that makes you to understand one of the greatest mysteries and one of the greatest blessings that the world has ever seen. Amen? That's why Jesus told uh, Nicodemus, except you be born again, except you be born of the Spirit, You've got to be touched by the Spirit of God to become a born-again believer in the finished work of Jesus on the cross. Amen? Praise the Lord. But let's go back to the 53rd chapter. We've got to do a little reading. Amen? Reading is good, folks. 
especially for Christians. Amen. God has given us all the evidence we need in his holy word. We have thousands of years of certification, verification, confirmation of the Messiah. It's all about the Messiah. Amen? And there's no, no prophet in the Bible that prophesied more about the Messiah than the prophet Isaiah. Amen? And we're going to continue reading in the 53rd chapter. I'll go back to the first verse. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Thank God he revealed it to you. If you, if you know Jesus as Savior, it's because God revealed the arm of the Lord. He let you know who Jesus is. Amen. Amen. That's what God did in John 1.1. 1, 1. Amen. Praise God. Thank God, amen, that uh, God has given us all these scriptures. John 1.1, 1, 1, it says, you know, uh, that Jesus is God is basically what it's saying. It says, it says uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen? In the beginning was the Word. All things was created by the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Amen? Praise the Lord. So here it says, Who hath believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. Amen. This is over, over 600 years before Jesus was born, before the Messiah had come, Isaiah has given us a profile of the Messiah and even what the Messiah would go through. It says, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Amen. That's, that's what you call the vicarious sufferings of Christ. He suffered, amen, in our place. He took our sin and shame upon him. Amen? Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Hallelujah. Amen. I said, but he was wounded for our transgressions. Amen. I'm glad to hear a few hallelujahs out there. Amen. He was, he was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, hallelujah, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When you think of how Jesus stood in Pilate's hall and how Jesus stood in Herod's hall and how they mocked him, amen, and, and, and how they laughed at him. Amen. And when Herod asked him, are you the king of Israel? And Jesus, the Bible says he didn't answer him. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't feel as though Herod was worthy of an answer. The Bible says he opened not his mouth. Isn't it amazing that all that was prophesied hundreds of years before Jesus, 
the things that the Messiah would go through, why he was going through it, amen? It says, he was oppressed and was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, hallelujah, the sacrifice lamb. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Jesus never opened his mouth and protested, uh, in protestation as, as they mocked him, as they spit on him, as they slapped his face. Amen. As they beat him over the head with a rod while he was wearing a crown of thorns. I can't get over that part. I went over that the last time I preached. You know, when the Bible describes that they put a crown of thorns on his head and then they took a, a rod and beat him on the head. So that means that those thorns that some of the uh, thorns uh, had thickets that were almost an inch long and they rammed it down on his head and then somebody picked up a, a rod and hit him on, when they hit him on the head, they were hitting him on that, on that crown of thorns. They were driving those thorns into his head. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Verse 5, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. Glory to God. Amen. Let me tell you something. The book of Isaiah has more prophecies of Jesus than any other book. And uh, the book of Isaiah was, was quoted by Jesus when he came more than any other book. Amen. Uh, some, of you, some of you heard of, of the Dead Sea Scrolls, one of the greatest uh, archaeological discoveries in, in recent history. Amen. And uh, what the Dead Sea Scrolls was, it was a, a, a network of caves down by the Dead Sea where uh, the Jews that were being exterminated by the Romans, they fled there and made a last stand up on Masada, and there were caves all around that area. And the Bible, I mean, the history tells us that the, the Essenes uh, were a group of, uh, uh, they were a group of uh, uh, Jewish uh, a religious sect, and, and a, a Jewish religious sect that uh, believed in pulling away from society, moving away from society, went out and lived in the desert. It is believed that John the Baptist grew up amongst the Essenes. And it belie it's believed that the Essenes were the ones that when the Romans were closing in to wipe out the Jerusalem, the Jewish nation, and all the rebels that rebelled against mighty Rome, uh, they made their last stand at Masada. But before they made their last stand at Masada, they took all the copies of the scriptures that they had and hid them in a network of about 200 caves. And when I was in Israel some years ago and we rode along the Dead Sea and looked up at those caves, I couldn't understand how there could be so many caves. It was hundreds of caves. And uh, the modern scientists and, and the archaeologists, they let us know that those caves were not made by man. They were caves that were naturally formed into the mountainside. They hid over 200 copies of the scriptures in there. And some of the scriptures were so old that they were fragmented. They didn't, and it was just portions. Some of them only had one page of, of, of scripture. But they found the book of Isaiah completely intact. It was completely intact. The book that has the most prophecies about the Messiah survived all those hundreds of years in caves inside of, uh, inside of clay jars, amen, all that time. And while the other manuscripts uh, faded, uh, some of them uh, were, were not able to be discerned, 
The book of Isaiah, they said, you can actually read it. And they, said, they have it on display in Jerusalem even now. But that's the book that has more prophecies of the Messiah. I think there's something supernatural about that. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think that's, that's something supernatural. Amen. And I think it's supernatural that Isaiah could see through, look down through the years and see what the Messiah would go through. And that he would write it down in detail for us. Amen. And we can read about it. Amen. I think I stopped at the seventh verse in 53rd chapter of Isaiah. It says, he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so opened not, open he not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the tra transgression of my people was he stricken. Amen. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich. When he died on the cross, he died between two wicked men. One of them, one of them humbled himself and repented and got, got saved and became the first person from the New Testament era to enter into paradise. Amen? They said he made his grave with the wicked and the dead. He, he was nailed on a cross between two thieves. Amen. Praise the Lord. Verse 9 says, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Amen? He was buried in a rich man's tomb. He made his grave with the wicked with the, with the wicked and the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Amen? Amen. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's a description of the vicarious sufferings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That were written hundreds of years before Christ was born in Bethlehem. Hundreds of years before he would go to the cross. Amen. Uh, you all just bear with me for a minute. Amen. Now, I got to remember not to use this one on my sweat no more. Amen. I'm going to put it out here where I have to. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I got another one for the sweat. The blue one. Amen. Air conditioning in here is beautiful. Why am I sweating so much? I'm a sweater. And I don't sweat much in other parts of my body. It all comes around my head. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. But, you know, we thank God for the vicarious sufferings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There was a, there's a song, amen, that Sister Joyce used to love. Let me see if I can find it for y'all. Yes, I found it. Sister Joyce used to love this. I think this song encouraged her in the early days of her salvation. She could tell y'all what song I'm getting ready to. It wouldn't be enough. Remember that, Joyce? By the archers, it wouldn't be enough. I'm going to read the words to you. If I had all the riches this world has to give, or the comfort that it brings, never needing anything. I could search the whole earth over, far and wide, trying to buy this precious love that was sent from God above. And it wouldn't be enough. No, it wouldn't be enough to buy one splinter of the tree that Jesus died on. And I couldn't pay the price for one single drop of blood that was shed for my salvation. 
This is a precious salvation. Amen. A high price was paid. Amen. That's the only way that the plan of salvation could work. If the, if the world was, was languishing in sin, if the whole world was condemned, amen, and only one sacrifice would redeem man from the curse of a broken law and the sins of this world, it would have to be something that would be precious, more precious than all the world, all the people in the world put together. The Son of God, the blood of God's Son. God said, I'm going to make up a body and I'm going to send my Son down and my Holy Spirit will be in him. You know, Jesus' last name was Holy Spirit. Amen? That's what Christ is. Christ means Holy Ghost, right? Amen. I think in Hebrew it says, Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeshua, the Messiah. And, and the word Messiah means anointed of God. Jesus was anointed by the Holy Ghost. And anybody that's ever felt the impact of the presence of the Holy Ghost and the anointing of the Holy Ghost using you in any capacity, you, you, can, you can rejoice that God allowed you to have a little touch of what Jesus experienced all day long every day. The anointing was on Jesus all day, every day. When Jesus was sleeping in his bed, he was anointed. Amen. Amen. He was God's anointed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And, you know, I thank the Lord, amen, that, you know, God loved us en enough. Amen. And thank God that Jesus loved us enough and was obedient. Jesus, Jesus went all the way. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The vicarious sufferings of Jesus. Amen. There's a, another thing that sometimes we get confused with the vicarious suffering. Uh, we have what we call the proxy prayer. And I told you last week I was going to talk about the proxy prayer. Uh, we, there's three samples of a proxy prayer. See, as Christians, we can we can um, stand for a, a person that cannot be present, amen, and we can pray. When that anointing makes it possible, you will be fruitful in that, you know? Uh, and uh, looking at the three examples, I'm gonna look at these three examples and then we'll be through, amen? Uh, the first one was the, how many, how many of you remember the, the Syrophoenician woman? Uh, the Bible says that Jesus was so worn out because Jesus ministered all day, every day. And he needed rest. He had a human body. He needed to rest. So the Bible says that Jesus left Jerusalem. He left Judea. And he crossed over into the country of the Gentiles, into the land of the Phoenicians, which is now Syria. He went out of Jerusalem because the crowds would not give him any rest. Everywhere he went, they crowded the place. And the Bible says many times that Jesus had an anointing that was so great that everyone that was present, and it was always thousands, his anointing was so great, the Bible says that virtue would go out of his body, and the Bible says, and he healed them all. Amen. Can you imagine having an anointing like that? The Bible says, they said, the Bible says, the multitudes came from all the regions round about. And they crowded the house where Jesus was in the house sleeping. Amen. And when Jesus came out, the Bible says, virtue came out of his body and he healed them all. And there's more than one occasion in the Bible where Jesus healed everybody. Thousands would attend his meetings, and everybody that needed healing would be healed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have a wonderful Savior. Amen. But Jesus, his last name was Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus the anointed. Amen. That's the way David described him, King David, in the second Psalm. He said, the Lord's anointed. Amen. Amen. And 
Jesus was anointed more than any man, more than any other prophet. Amen? More than any other man of God. Amen? Because Jesus was anointed all the time. The anointing was always available to him. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible, and I think it's in the 16th chapter of the Gospel of John, where it says that Jesus said, told the disciples, don't worry, don't, don't fret because I'm going away. He said, because if I, if I don't go away, the Holy Ghost won't come. He said, but if I go away, this is how you know Jesus is divine, that he's deity, that he's God, and that all the power of God is in his hand. He said, if I go away, I will send. I will send the Holy Ghost. Amen. We need to understand who Jesus is. Amen. Sometimes we don't even call him Jesus. Sometimes we call him the Christ. You know what that means? The anointed one. Amen? Praise the Lord. What a wonderful Savior. Amen. So, the Syrophoenician woman who lived in Syria, and Jesus is looking for a place to get some rest where nobody knows him. Amen? So he left Israel. He left Jerusalem. He left Judea. Amen. The Bible says he went into the borders of uh, Syria. And the Bible says, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says it's found in the seventh chapter, it's found in the seventh chapter of Mark. Mark 7, 24 through 29. And it says that Jesus, when he went into Syria, when he came into the region, uh, into this Gentile area, he was no longer in the Jewish area, he's in the Gentile area. When he came into the Gentile area, amen, they say he went into a house and Jesus went into hiding. It says he went into a house and wanted no man to know that he was there. He hid. He found somebody's house to go in and he hid. He said, don't tell nobody I'm here. I'm here to rest. You know, Jesus needed rest too. He had a body like us. Amen. And the Bible says, but he could not be hid. And the reason he could not be hid, it said, there was this one Syrophoenician woman who had a child that was demon possessed. And you're talking about having an urgent need. If you ever get a demon possessed person in your family, amen, you will realize Amen, that this is one of the worst conditions that can come over a human being because it takes over the whole house. It takes over the whole family. They're dangerous. Amen. She had a, you, you know, a demon-possessed demon person would, would dive into the fire. Why they, they used fireplaces to cook? They would dive into the fire. They would try to eat hot coal. You know, the devil, it's a demon, a demon trying to destroy a human being. Amen. The Bible says she had a, a demon-possessed child, and she was desperate. I, and see, the Bible says that Jesus, the Bible, if you read the text, you see that Jesus specifically tried to go in secret. So he went secretly and told no man that he was there, amen, because Jesus was trying to get some rest. Amen. But he said, but he could not be hid, and it tells you why he couldn't be hid. It said, because this Syria, this Syria Phoenician woman, she found him. She was desperate, you know? She had been praying, amen, and she had heard about Jesus, amen. Somehow, the Bible doesn't tell us how she found out, but somehow she found out where he was. And the Bible says she came to the place where Jesus was. I guess Jesus was surprised when he saw her. He said, goodness gracious. And... The Bible says that she told Jesus, she said, Jesus, my daughter is home grievously vexed of a demon, of an evil spirit, an unclean spirit. Amen. And Jesus told her, I'm, I'm sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's my mission. And you, you, make, you want to make me detour. I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And she said, yea, Lord, you're right. Amen? 
And when Jesus saw this combination of faith and humility, he got excited. And there's not many places in the Bible where Jesus got excited, but Jesus got excited. She said, yea, Lord. He said, I can't take, I can't take the children's food and cast it before dogs because Gentiles were regarded by Jews as dogs, unclean. Amen? And Jesus knew what he was saying. Jesus said, it's not proper for me to take the children's food and cast it before dogs. And she said, yea, Lord, you're always right. She didn't say that part, I, I admit. She said, yea, Lord, truth, Lord. One, 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 it's in two versions. One says she said, yea, Lord. One says she said, truth, Lord. She said, but even the dogs are allowed to have the scraps that fall from the children's table. And when Jesus, the Bible says, when Jesus saw her faith and humility, amen? You know, because it takes faith and humility to get a prayer through. It takes humility just to pray, amen? And it takes great faith for your prayer to go through. And Jesus said, oh, woman, and that's an exclamation. He said, oh, woman, that's when you're excited, right? Isn't that what people say when they're excited? Oh, Oh my, oh! Jesus said, oh woman, great is your faith. Be it unto you according to your, your will. Be it done unto you. He said, according to your faith, be it done unto you. He said, the demon just went out of your door. Go home. And without even going to the house, Jesus cast out that demon. And see, that woman was praying. When she, when she approached Jesus and told him about her need and what she wanted, she was, that's prayer. See, you ever notice when Jesus performed most of his miracles, he didn't have to pray because he's the one that answers prayer. Amen? All the answers to prayer come by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And Jesus said the Holy Ghost, when he comes, He's not going to speak of himself. He said, the Holy Ghost will glorify me. Wow, what a statement. Can you imagine what a statement? He said, the, whole, the Holy Ghost, everybody knows the Holy Ghost is God. Well, we all know the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Amen? Praise God. This woman went home, and the demon was gone out of her child. That was great faith. Jesus, old woman, great is thy faith. Another example, and this will be the last one. Maybe I'll give you two more. In the eighth chapter of Romans, you all remember the, the uh, Roman centurion. And you notice that both of these were not Jews. These were not Jewish people. Amen. These were Gentiles who were frowned upon by the Jews. The Jews looked down on Gentiles. They felt that Gentiles were unclean. Amen. And if you go to the eighth chapter of Matthew, we'll read about the Roman centurion whose servant, he had a servant, this Roman centurion had a servant who had the palsy. And I explained to you what once before that the palsy uh, Cerebral palsy, we call it today, at the worst form of it, cerebral palsy. And apparently this was the worst form of it, amen, because this centurion told Jesus, he said, my servant is at home grievously tormented of the palsy. That sounds to me like cerebral palsy. And I have some experience with that because my sister had cerebral palsy and she was my only playmate for, for a time, amen, and she couldn't do anything. She couldn't feed herself. She couldn't do anything, you know? And she couldn't walk. She couldn't move her arm. If she itched, somebody else had to scratch her. Amen. Well, this centurion, this wasn't even his child. This was his servant. And he had compassion on his servant, and he had heard about all that Jesus was doing all around in Jerusalem, amen? And when he came into his region, 
He went to Jesus and told Jesus, my servant is at home grievously tormented with the palsy. That means the person was paralyzed, totally paralyzed. Amen? My sister was so, so uh, affected by paralysis that she couldn't properly swallow, swallow any food that had to be chewed because she, she didn't know to chew. So we could only give her cream of wheat, wheat tina, oatmeal, amen, and she would have tremors. And, and when she had these, these convulsions, she would spit the food back out. She, she blew spit all day. She blew spit. Amen. You know, some people, many of us, we think we have problems. We think we, think we got, well, I'm sick, I got this, I got this. Listen, there are some conditions that would make you be glad to have what you, what you think you uh, loathe so much. Amen. The centurion had compassion. When he saw what this, this child with the palsy had and what they went through and what it was like and the torment, you know, it causes the bodies to be contorted, you know, he had compassion. You know, the Bible says there's two powerful things that get prayer that makes the Holy Ghost move. You can make the Holy Ghost move if you have great compassion and great humility. Amen? And the Bible says prayer or, or faith that works by love. This centurion was exercising faith that was driven by his great love for his servant. It, you know, we all have great love for our children and our, you know, our, our, our family members and loved ones, but this was his servant. And he had great love for his servant, and he went to Jesus and told Jesus, my servant is at home sick of the palsy and grievously tormented of the palsy. Amen. And Jesus told him, now this, look at this man's, the, 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 the great heart of this centurion. Jesus told him, I will go with you to her and heal her. Jesus already, Jesus answered his prayer. Jesus said, I will go to him and heal He said, oh no, I'm not worthy for you to come under my house. I'm, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. He said, and I know who you are. He said, I'm a man that has authority. I have men under me, and I tell this one to go, and he goes. I tell that one to go, and he goes. He said, you have authority. Speak the word, and my servant shall be healed. And Jesus said, I have not seen so great faith. No, not in all Israel. Amen. Now, these are two examples of proxy faith. So when we talk about proxy faith, bear in mind, we're talking about the most powerful prayers that can be paid, prayed. Amen? Amen? Prayers that make Jesus get excited, make Jesus say, oh! Amen. Oh, woman, great is thy faith. And to the centurion, he said, I have not seen so great faith, no, not in Israel. Be it unto thee, according as thou hast believed. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's one more. We ain't in no rush, are we? I ain't in no rush. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In Acts, the 19th chapter, and 11th to 12th to the 12th verse, it says that the Lord wrought special miracles at the hands of the Apostle Paul, that by, it says, it says, from his body, aprons and handkerchiefs were brought. People would come, what would happen when Paul was ministering, because the anointing was so rich and so great and so powerful in some of his meetings, amen, that this was something that was initiated by the Holy Ghost, amen? All miracles are initiated by the Holy Ghost. And sometimes your faith can tap into that. Amen? It says that people were sending their aprons and their handkerchiefs. What they would do as Paul was coming by, maybe preaching, ministering to people, you know, the women would stand out and take their handkerchiefs 
Amen. As, as, as Paul would go by and just try to get it to touch him. You know, if I could, remember the, remember the woman that had the issue of blood? She said, if I, if, I can get, if I can get close enough to touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Amen. Praise the Lord. And when Jesus turned around and said, somebody touched me, I felt virtue go out of my body. And he looked at the woman, and the woman, you know, she thought Jesus was scolded. Jesus said, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you whole. It's your faith that connects with the Holy Ghost that brings about the miracle, that brings about the healing, that brings about the miraculous answer to prayers. Amen. But we don't want to try to, we don't want to try to mimic this powerful faith, amen, that certain people may have because of their great love or because of their great need. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. I'll go to the last one. Acts, the 19th chapter, 11 and 12th verse. It says, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs, aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and evil spirits went out of them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, this wasn't something that Paul ordered. Paul didn't say, go get your handkerchiefs. And... No, this was something that the Holy Ghost initiated. These, these women, and it was probably mostly women, might have been some men too, amen. But the, the, the inspiration came into their heart. I can't reach him, but if, 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 as he passes by, if I could touch him with my apron, if I could just, just hit him with my apron, if I could just touch him, let, let me touch him with something that I'm, I'm holding on to. Amen. Well, that was inspired by the Holy Ghost. Amen? And you can't replicate the miracles of God, and we can't, we can't, uh, we can't ritualize. We can't uh, ritualize the miracles of God. We can't take the miracles of God that are the most profound miracles in the New Testament during the ministry of Jesus. And we can't just replicate that because it sounds good. And we, well, if it happened for them, I'm going to do it too. Uh, I, I remember there was a, a Christian person that I knew very well. And they, they, bought a, they, they were going to buy a house. And they were having trouble getting credit and having trouble getting the money and, and all kinds of things. And they said, and this was the person that tended to, to walk by faith. And they said, well, suppose I walk around that house like Joshua did. <laughs> Amen. This is, a true, this is a true story. She said, Reverend Thornton, if, if if I walk around the house like Joshua did and claim it for my family, won't God give it? I said, no. I said, listen. She said, no, I, I think, I, Remson, you ain't showing enough to faith. And so they went on and went and did. They got, as a matter of fact, they got some other Christians to go with them. And they went and they marched around this house. And I told them, don't do it. I said, y'all shouldn't. <laughs> they went anyhow. Amen. And when the word came back that not only had, they, had their application for a loan been rejected, but they had got another buyer that bought that house. You know, uh, you can't replicate the, the miracles that are inspired by the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost initiate. Amen. And the Holy Ghost starts with an ordinary believer by just touching your heart. Amen. Maybe because you have love for a loved one, great compassion for a loved one. Amen. Amen. And because of this urgent need. Amen. And then the Holy Ghost will touch you. Amen. And you'll be able to maybe intercede. Amen. We have intercessory prayer. That's not the same as a proxy prayer, but it's just as good for us. Amen. Amen. Intercessory prayer is when you got people that gather together for prayer. Amen. Submit your prayer, amen, to a prayer group. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. But 
Thank God that proxy prayer, intercessory prayer, none of that can take the place of what Jesus did. The vicarious, substitutional death of Jesus Christ. He died for us so that we could have eternal life. He died so that we will not have to die no more. He died, amen, to give us eternal life. Amen. Amen. Like the song says, if I had all the riches this world has to give, and I gave it all away, every penny to my name, to some beggar on life's lost and lonely street, all this kindness found in me could not win eternity, and it wouldn't be enough. No, it wouldn't be enough to buy one splinter of the tree that Jesus died on. And it wouldn't pay the price for one single drop of blood that was shed for my salvation, for your salvation. Amen. Thank God for the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in our text, the fifth chapter of Corinthians, for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, amen, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Thank God for Jesus, amen. Thank, thank God, amen, for, for the atonement. Thank God for his atoning blood. The blood that was shed for you was precious. You ought to give him your best. You ought to try to give God your best service, your best devotion, your best dedication, Amen? It's worth it. Eternity is worth it. Amen? Uh, being a joint heir with Jesus Christ is worth it. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen? We're going we're gonna to close this with an invitation. Amen? Anyone that has not accepted Jesus as their Savior, amen? Remember the, the prophet Isaiah said, who hath believed our report? Do you believe the report? Do you believe the report that Jesus has purchased eternal life for you. He's made it possible for you to have everlasting life just by believing, just by believing that Jesus did it for you, that his blood paid the price, and that the wrath of God was satisfied by the blood of Jesus Christ. For whosoever wants it, whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, amen, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If there's one here that has not yet confessed with their mouth and believed in their heart that Jesus died on the cross for their sins and accepted him as their savior, if you haven't accepted him, let's all stand, amen. And anyone that wants to be saved, anyone that wants to give their heart to Christ, join us at the altar. Amen. And if you can't come to the altar, just raise your hand. Amen. But if you want to be saved, if you're not sure, if you died today, if you died tonight, where will you be tomorrow? Do you have blessed assurance? We sing a song, blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Amen. It's a beautiful song. But I hope you have that reality in your heart. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation. I've been purchased by God. I've been born of his spirit. I've been washed in his blood. This is my story. This can be your story. If you've never openly confessed Jesus as your Lord, if you've never repented of your sins, you want to take this opportunity I want you to raise your hand or come to the altar. Amen. Don't be ashamed. Amen. Anyone that <coughs> you're not say, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> if you can't say that you are a born again Christian, amen, why would you hesitate to accept eternal life? Why would you hesitate to accept immortality? Why would you hesitate to be a joint heir? Jesus is inviting you to be a joint heir with him. Jesus said, all that the Father has 
is mine, and all mine can be thine. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray if there's any that want to be saved. If not, This is what 